Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, all right, it is officially 7.01. Um, we need to approve minutes. I had sent you all minutes um, of July 22nd, forever ago. Um, and you know, Greg, you were good. You sent me, um, or was that the September one we were last week? We'll just check here too. July. So the one that got posted was the first one that you sent me, and then you sent me a revised one. Yeah. So let's just revise on the, the one that I have, and I'll, anybody else is coming with each other. Yeah. Um, so what I noticed was you had Jack is absent. Okay. <laughs> and he was here. Um, however, Barack was absent. Okay. Um, and then I didn't have any other, um, I didn't have any other changes. Did anybody else on the July 22nd? Nope. All right, and then September 23rd. Um, the only thing I had was with Jack Lee was being there, so he's no longer on. Might have met Jack for fair. No, because no. he's there, okay. See, if somebody gets struck, I'm not necessarily aware. Exactly. Okay, so he's off, okay. and then you have next meeting was scheduled by a Zoom, but it was actually we said we were going to be in person. So oh. I'll give you that. Okay. All right. So, do I have a motion, or does Greg have a motion to approve the minutes of the July twenty second and the September twenty third minutes as amended? Who makes a motion? Amanda, in a second. A second. John Matz. All right. All in favor? Good. All right. ARPA funds. Um, I'm sure you've been hearing a lot about the ARPA funds. Buchanan is getting $6.1 million. We've already gotten two point nine. Um, there have been now a series of um, TDAC actually sponsored a forum back in July. We've had um, town councils had a public hearing. Um, a third, I guess, the worst weapon. We had another um, input session, and um, the town council subcommittee is working on this. There is a list of probably now we're probably up to about eighteen million dollars of things where we could spend the money of, of initiatives and items where we could spend the money. Um, what's making it? What we've heard from the subcommittee is there are several items on the, the list, and there are several lists, by the way, there's no one list, but there's the list that I've been keeping. There's um, several items that the town council subcommittee just thinks need to, everybody's in agreement, we need to move forward with them. Um, and so they've asked the Board of Selectmen, the process is that the Board of Selectmen has to make a recommendation, and then it goes through the regular special appropriation process, which is where the Board of Finance would approve an expenditure, we have to notice it, and then the town council would ultimately approve it. So there's not really much more to report on it other than that. Um, I'm trying to find the most recent list. So has the town council subcommittee identified those things? They have, as I say, they've got a list and we've got a list. Oh, the other thing that's happening is we had originally talked about um, putting in certain amount of money aside for the community foundation to help us because their process of determining what nonprofits get is such a good one and letting them do that piece of it. So we are in the process of setting up a meeting with the community foundation and the town council subcommittee so that everybody can understand exactly what that process would look like. There's questions like, do we give to a nonprofit that's not physically here? But they serve the Canaan residents. Kids in crisis is a perfect example. You know, if there's a, a, a child in a home here that runs into a problem and needs immediate shelter, they end up going to Greenwich. That's, that's where their shelter is. So there are those kind of questions. They were the subcommittee was really um, struggling with putting parameters together on on what they wanted to spend the money on. But um, ultimately, um, I think I think you know the, the certain items like like the playhouse, ice rink, 79, channel 79, upgrading all the equipment on 79 was a no-brainer as far as anybody was concerned. Um, because Zoom is here to stay, as far as as far as we can tell. So at any rate, um, there's a template, a template that people are filling out, or is there any criteria? Because yeah. there's some things that, that I would like to put together. I don't know how that would work. Um, with a 
Yeah, right. Do we even have a crack at it? Like, is there anything yeah. we can ask for? I mean, that's it's totally open um, right now. People are just sending emails with, uh, they came to both the forums. Yeah. People are sending emails to either to Nate or to Mark Jinsky, who seems right. to be heading up the uh, process. I'm sure the nonprofit piece, which is where a lot of the requests that we've already gotten will ultimately fall, they do have, I mean, that's what the Community Foundation is known for, is they will have a form of the process. So um, we don't have that yet. And, you know, quite honestly, in, in looking at what all the other towns are doing, it's running the gamut. Some, some towns have just taken all the money and they're putting it into infrastructure. Darian, I've heard recently, and I suggest this. Hand raised, I see it, Jack. Um, Darian, I heard, is really putting a lion share. They got a similar amount to us um, into flood mitigation. They mm -hmm. have a huge problem with flooding, right? So they're looking at an opportunity to do that. For us, um, you know, we have some that think that it should go to some of it should go to lost revenue. While the town didn't lose revenue off when in net revenue, um, there were areas like the Department of Department that lost revenue. So, um, so that's what the, the as I say, the, uh, the subcommittee is still dealing with. But no, the answer to your question is requests are just coming in. Okay. Yep. Sort of are the lists that. public? Or? The lists are, they're all on the um, uh, on town website, of course, okay. the list that people are working with. So the most recent one is the town council, the last town council meeting. Jack, do you have a question? Well, yeah, a couple of things. Um, does the, the money that's given to us, does it call out anything specifically about oh, yeah. the commercial area. Oh, about the commercial area? I mean, it does. Yeah, the so, money being used commercial for to benefit the commercial area, which has been so damaged by COVID. Um, it does and it doesn't. It doesn't explicitly say, you know, because how would you do that? I and mean, Laura and I talked about that quite a bit. How, how would you, if there was, um, would you make it available to each individual business owner? Some towns are using it for business improvement. Um, mm -hmm. front door kind of improvement uh, projects, things like that. Um, well, I mean, I, I think we could discuss about as a group discussions, you know, as to how the money could be used. I mean, I have some ideas. I'm sure some other people do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think the key thing from a Chamber of Commerce perspective, what, you know, what you know, I can't pick and choose between which businesses or which streets or which area um, is we hope that some of the funds will go to move the playhouse along in its process. Right now they're redoing the roof. I mean, you know, as a boost to downtown, having a thriving theater that's got something going on six or seven nights uh, a week um, would be amazing or during the day. And so, you know, the money is six million dollars is not a lot of money. And if you know, if the town bodies deem some of it to move the interior work that needs to bring that building up to code, so then we can turn it over to an operator or a nonprofit group. That's that's gonna be the of the ultimate boost and probably the fairest way to do it. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of businesses would line up, but it's just not a lot of money, especially with town projects in there. What 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 are some of your thoughts? I'm curious. Uh, my thoughts. Yeah, you said you had yeah. some ideas. So I mean, yeah, I'm not looking to, yeah to to help individual businesses possibly, but it would be to improve the marketing of the town. I think that we are uh, kind of behind in our um, you know uh, ability to attract people through social media. Uh, we could maybe work on that with some funds. Uh, I am continually concerned about uh, the taxes that are being charged to the uh, downtown area. Maybe some money could be used to study that and to to see if they're how our our taxation lines up with other towns or uh, maybe can have some relief over this period. Uh, I think rents are moderating, but taxes have not. I think it's a two two glove situation. Um, so there's things like that I think about taxes that would benefit it. Taxes were one thing that was definitely called out as you can't lower people's taxes. You can't you can't give everyone a rebate, if you will. Um, it's but really certainly yeah. I think we could. Well, my point is that we would study this. I think that. Uh, uh, 
you know, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of complaints from merchants about their taxes. I did hear a story of someone that was opening up another store in Norwalk from New Canaan, and the amount of taxes that were being charged were substantially lower. So, uh, well, they have we those have opportunity our, zones. They do. They have those opportunity zones, so that's getting matched. Okay, so let me ask you this. I mean, could could that money be used to try to get an opportunity zone in New Canaan? We can't. What if we met with them? We tried. Yeah. To explain. We okay. we met with the plan, uh, town kind of urban planner uh, in Norwalk, and the state decides which zip codes qualify for opportunity okay. zones and rebates and all that. And 06840. Mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine. It, it is yeah. not going to because that would be awesome, right? To 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 right. share some tax relief. Um, and I think it's just e economics. It's just economics. The, the demographics so you know you can look on the norwalk town website and you see these areas that have been laid laid over and but it's it's involved this it's state involvement i didn't realize this that as a town we can't just spot lower taxes um you know it's it once it's set it's set and i think when the last time they did the reval all of downtown went up. My parents live in a condo next to the Acme. They were all up in arms because all of their taxes went yeah. up. So the whole mm -hmm. downtown area, and of course, obviously it's very much impacted the business uh, because all the rents on all these buildings went, went down. So are, it's very frustrating. Are there any laws that say you can't, like just to give, sort of like, thanks for staying with me here. And like, here's a, you know, well, you actually, the town can reduce people's taxes if they can balance the budget and reduce taxes. So that's possible. I mean, we, we collect, we based our budget on a 98% budget rate, and we always collect well over 99, almost 100%. So we've always got that. Right now, there's been several um, elected officials over the years that always maintain that that they're basically overtaxing the residents by doing that. But it's come in very handy when all of a sudden you have some major but expenditures. Everybody's downtown taxes went up. So, not only the storefronts, but for instance, I would like to have that thank you for sticking around kind of thing. So, I think that would be kind of like have equitable. Yeah, yeah, it can't. It, I, I, I think it's a great idea. I mean, I support the cons, not the concept, the problems, but uh, the idea at the end is yeah. Yeah. And um, we also, uh, Jack, Jack mentioned a couple of things in our when we talk about the different um, areas that we're all working on. There are opportunities, things that you might want for funds for. Right. So we'll get to that, I guess, later. But Jack kind of touched on one of them. Um, so Liv Canaan came and, and presented, right? They were wanted back to your marketing piece, Jack. Um, they came and they wanted to continue. They did a nice presentation. I mean, I think you all saw it at the last meeting, right? Um, so they right. came on for, for some of that. So it's, it's, I wouldn't say we're at the very beginning of the process, but we're still at the early stages of the process, the town council subcommittee. By the way, we have until 2024 to spend this money. We don't have to decide, you know, oh, in the next great. month. We're, we're, we do have to have a plan, according to the auditor, of where we're thinking we're going to be spending this money. And certainly anything that we approve now, and we, I say, it's really going to be a town council action to, to approve the funds. That all has to be well justified and that kind of thing. But so we've got some time. So if there's something that we come up with as a group, as a TDAC group, that we want to recommend, we should absolutely be doing that. BJ, you had your hand up? You're on mute. Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, the idea about the playhouse, though, is just so ph phenomenal. Is that something that is actively being, um, you know, um, budgets are getting created to better understand that? Yes, and actually that's on our little bit uh, further down on the agenda, just back to old business. We'll talk more about the playhouse specifically because there's multiple 
um, things that are happening with regards to the playoffs. So the answer to your question is yes. Alan? Wonderful. Um, can you just run through what, what can we not spend it on? I know we can't do taxes. Are there any other broad buckets we should just so stay away from? So can't apply it as matching funds towards other federal grants. Um, you can't use it to pay down any unfunded pension liabilities. Uh, paying interest or principal outstanding debt, you can't use it for. Um, and really, it, it's really was um, the intent was forward thinking, right? It wanted to stimulate the economy, it wanted to, to be able to provide some assistance, certainly any COVID relief, any negative impacts of COVID. Um, was, but that's very broad. And I, I've been listening to some early conversations with the auditors and you know all of their towns that they work with, everybody's having the same conversation. What, what can you not spend on? And it really is the, the only sort of backward um, expense that, that you could is lost revenue, but you can't go and have it pay for something that you already approved and now you've got debt service on or something like that. So, so more to come, as I say, the, the town council subcommittee is working on it. Um, Rita will be intimately involved. So maybe at the next meeting, Rita will be able to give us, who will be a new town council member, will be able to give us, um, can you tell us the process by which the designations will be made? So um, the process will be that it will follow the normal process, which is um, either the board of selectmen will or or um, the subcommittee will make a recommendation, and then the town council, the board of finance will approve it, and then it will go to the town council, just like a special commission. The and, and again, if we decide to give some money to the community foundation to deal with our profits, that would go through that process, but then they will have their own process in terms of the allocations. So it's a good problem to have. Um, as I say, some communities just put it all into broadband. Um, I think what Darian's doing is very smart considering they've had some, they have a really serious problem there in their downtown business district with businesses just getting flooded on broadband. So, so stay tuned, um, I'll keep you posted. That's That one's um, ongoing, if you will. Um, the Waveney House Utilization Study. So I think I mentioned this all to you. Um, previously as well. We are in the process, we have hired um, a consulting firm, actually a brand marketing firm out of Greenwich called Case Study Brands. Um, they were the, um, two of the women who were part of the principals started the um, Greenwich Town Party, right? It was their idea, they got it running. Many of you are familiar with the Greenwich Town Party. Uh, at any rate, we have been speaking with them and we've hired them to look at Waving House and really, um, give us an overall idea of how it could become really the wedding venue. It's well, it's a wedding venue that everybody loves, and and, and people come from far away to, to have their weddings there. Right now, it is not the the level that it could be. That um, we were joking the other day. They said, you know, right now, if you're a new bride and you call up Waveney to talk about your wedding. You're gonna, the first thing that you're gonna hear is, hi, the recreation department, you know, and, and then you're, or if you show up at Waveney to get a tour, you're gonna be next to the kids with their T ball permits, their pool permits. So little things like having just a dedicated phone line, maybe for Waveney weddings. Um, Michael Biondo, many of you might know here in town, who's an incredible photographer, and Jane Bayless have agreed to come and do some interior um, photo. Uh, take some photos for us of the inside of Um So at any rate, we are on the way. Uh, the other part of this is we're developing a business plan. We've had some help from Christine Sullivan, who's with the SBA. So we're putting together a business plan. Right now, we've I think it's $2,700 um, and 3400 depending if you're a resident or non-resident, to rent Waveney for an event. Yeah, $2,700. So cheap, right? <laughs> so cheap. But, even, but you also don't have a lot of the amenities of other places that have. Right. But it is, it's cheap. Yeah, right? I mean, uh... yeah. We, so, so, oh, and the other piece of this is um, there's a group of students from my own college who are studying this as well as part of the project. And I was on the phone with them today. They were out at Kathy and Carburetors. They come back to a couple of events to do some interviews. We're also, um, the case study brand folks have been interviewing um, past brides, caterers, special events, folks who have worked for our baby. Whole list of questions, you know, how, how, 
uh, what's missing. The number one thing that we keep hearing is air conditioning. You know, there's no air oh, there's no air conditioning. No. You know, it's crazy. There's almost like the neural microclimate over there actually is always 10 degrees cooler. We were talking with one bride who said, I was so worried about it. It was a 90 degree day. It was actually fine. It's a brick. Everything's cement in there, right? Every wall is cement. But you don't want to have a wedding and that one day you're there, it's 100 don't. degrees. And we also don't have, you know, there's a room upstairs that we use as the bride's room. Uh -huh. The bride gets dressed well, there's no elevator. So that limits if you yeah. had any. Um, yeah. Anybody who needed to get upstairs that wasn't able to, to use the stairs. So this whole project not only is going to help us um, build Waveney to be what Waveney can be, but also to justify the expenditures when we come to the town and say we need an elevator, we need air conditioning, and that kind of thing. So um, more to come from that, but um it has a the, kitchen and everything. Oh, it has an amazing yeah. kitchen. In fact, the caterers all say it's yeah, it's a commercial big commercial kitchen, commercial kitchen. 12 burners with a big oh, island like yeah. this. Of stainless steel um, workspace, well, I think the industrial good. dishwasher, the whole thing. No, I, think that, I think this is a great idea. Mm. You know? I mean, I, I got married in this, but that's a historical house. They didn't have air conditioning, right? They didn't. I mean, and they didn't have as big of a even a kitchen. And I definitely paid more than twenty seven hundred. That was years ago. Well, so. I could, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm just going back to my days yeah. of. Uh, I was in Venice and I took people to a beautiful villa. When I went to the villa, it was nice weather. When I went that night yeah. with a group of people, it was. 95 degrees, it was totally uncomfortable to yeah. eat. Uh, it just made, you know. Yeah, of course, it, it yeah. makes it better. And it also has limitations in that its capacity is only 160, which some rides we know are well beyond that. Yeah. And there are the three rooms. You can't have a dance floor in the main room and have everybody in there. So the other thing that we're exploring is, you know, do we need to have a tent? Do we need to put up a tent somewhere on the property um, that would be up like Cranberry Park that has full time with regular, you know, Floor and all that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it could be an incredible revenue producing um, item for us. And also place. bring people from who knows where from other towns to come in and right. have their wedding there. I think it's a great idea. The, the, the kids from Iowa that went over to Kathy and Carver's, they interviewed, I think they said 32 people. Um, interesting, of the 32, 28 were non Buchanan residents, had been to Waverly before, but did not doubt it was available for rentals. Well, oh, the other thing is we really want to maintain them. We do the week we want Waverly to be there for the Rotary Club to have their lunches, for, for Boy Scouts to meet. Um, it should be for the community as it always has been. But on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, it could be a premier wedding venue. I think not only that, I think it could be also for business meetings and things like that. Because, yeah. you know, I, I mean, again, I don't know the interior of it so much, but still it's a nice kind of historic place. Maybe there is a, a room upstairs that they call the boardroom of the conference room. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions they asked is because we don't really have any audiovisual um, capabilities there. So is that something um, would, you know, if our finance department had a retreat over there a couple of weeks ago, it was fine for them. They just need to sit around and do this. But if you had a real business meeting, would you need the proper equipment? So Sometimes even to weddings, they like to have a- uh, They do, I mean, and, I, and now they bring it all in, although I saw the list of what they do have up there. They have a lot more equipment than, than I thought they did. Yeah. Like Farmers. So Farmers. 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 There's always somebody that would be on site as part of the wedding. Butch works on the ground, so he, he comes with each wedding. So they would provide that list. So Butch is like the coordinator? Is that no, he's he's more of just the on-site person. He would be able to, if anything went wrong. The real coordinator is the, it's, and it's probably about 30% of her job, her day-to-day -day function, and she's also in charge of everything else that happens up there. But she works with the brides and sets everything up, and again, florists or um, anything like that would come through her. Um, we, we need a proper website. We don't have that right now. If you go into the town website, you look, and there's some nice pictures, but they're just pictures and pictures and pictures and somebody has sent them that they got. So um, it's still a lot of potential. Yeah. Is there any price mm -hmm. attached to grades or any estimates? Of um, they have some ideas on the, uh, not on the air conditioning, you know, again, they're going to have to do it from above and below because it is all cement, so they don't have to put any duct work, but I know the elevator had, they were talking about that free bird cage elevator in the middle. Um, I can't remember what the number is, but I know that, that was discussed. I'm sure that's 
the price of yeah. all kind of people currently. So it's already all booked for 2022 during the morning season. Nice. So we have no problem, right? But we have no problem booking it. But it's, um, but it's, it's getting the cost to justify. Yeah, it makes sense. And also, um, Weddings now are taking up are happening on Thursdays. You know, sometimes people are getting married on Thursdays. Here are the fireworks, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So there's a constant juggle. Steve Benko has to do this balancing act all the time of making sure that if there's a wedding, that there's not also a concert going on in the park, or that some theater's not having a big production going on, it might conflict, or having car breakers isn't happening on the same day that you're having a wedding. These are not in really noise. Uh, the typical, the, the normal the noise way. for town. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, I, when you mentioned meetings, I think that's something we should really look at because, you know, weddings are usually Saturdays, but meetings are the other, you know, five days a week. And with COVID, so many businesses are hesitant to put their employees on airplanes and fly. And, you know, we're so close to New York, we could have a really, really great day business there. Um, and it also would bring people into the town. It would just be a great way to market it to a wonderful audience. I know we want to have more people take office space there. So I right. think as, as much as we could get Waveney wired and ready for those types of meetings and market that as aggressively as the weddings. I agree. So right now, for any of you that have been up there, the Rift of Creation Department is up there, offices on one side, and then two of the offices, Steve Benko's office, Bill Cat are on the others, and then at the end of the hall is where um, uh, IT is. Ultimately, we'd like to get all that out of there. Right, and get that into a normal office building, whether in this building or the annex next door or wherever that hasn't really been discussed, and really have that building completely open for all sorts of um, activities like we talked about. Um, I would imagine the demand would probably be there easily. Oh, easily. Easily. For us, it would be like managing capacity, like what we want to do. Because I, I, frankly, that's if, if you build it, they will come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's look, such a look how it is not much competition, you know, and price and. and as well, far as atmosphere, right. so that's, that's part of this analysis that the kids are doing. I don't think you should be joking, but I think you should definitely not be undervaluing it. And you should seasonally adjust your basis. Yeah. Um, you know, in the summer months, you know, wedding season. Yes. Okay. I got married at Caramore 30 years ago. We used only the outside facilities, and it was five thousand dollars just to to be on the property. And we had to be out by, you know, seven thirty. Just so right. I mean, what covers I mean, the so insurance and stuff like that? Well, no, they have to submit all yeah. of that. Well, they, they submit them. They 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 yeah. do insurance. Um, nice to get locals that are free. Well, they do. They have a resident and non-resident rate. And by the way, many of these weddings actually happen on site too. They do it down the walled garden, and then everybody comes nice. up. And if you've been there recently, that whole side area is finally finished. That ramp now, there's a beautiful yeah. um, accessible ramp going all the way up with granite flagstone. They put in a new fire escape. The new roof is on, so um, the building is prompt. Even with a tent, like I guess Mary Wainwright and Rye, they put up a tent when we like it, it slows them down. So, right now, there was no tents. None at all. Okay. None at all. Um, but that's been a rule that I think probably needs to be revisited. I think that's just an old rule that. And they did it for post prom. There was ten ten up for post prom. They did, and they've done it once for the YMCA, once for the library. Right. But um, you know, the tenant has to go up five days ahead, right? They usually put up like on a Tuesday for for a Saturday wedding oh. because the ground has to be dry. Uh, so they there's there's that. But um, many of the venues that we've looked at already do have dedicated tents, even like up in Vermont at Hill Dean, which is a beautiful old historic home. Mm -hmm. Um, they've now built a, a platform with a tent off to the side. You wouldn't want to interfere with that million dollar view looking out from the house, but there's, I think there's places that you could put one out. Do you think the target rate is um, due to the comparables you've seen? So you I haven't, I've only seen two, yeah, two of them, so I haven't really, I couldn't really answer that other than to tell you that um, the, the case study folks and the IOMA team were both spending a lot of time looking at that because that was the one thing that we wanted. We also have um, Alan Smith is helping us. He is the past president and CEO of Four Seasons. So he's helping us run the business plan. Who's that? Um, Alan Smith, he lives yeah. here in town. Mm -hmm. And um, so he's helping us with the business plan. Four Seasons Hotels? Yes. Yeah. Um, so between Christine Sullivan and Alan Smith, and then we've got help from our finance department. We're going to have all that analysis to look at soon. So it's exciting. It's been a fun project to work on, actually. Um, first of all, I'm learning so much about the house, and there's a whole kind of getting all this information about when the house 
this is what you know Lava Moy when she built the house. And, and if, if you ever have a chance to have Steve Banco take you through the house and show you around because he knows every, all the panels in that one room that just look like regular walls, all of them have there's a safe as big as that door, all tucked away in one of them. Um, but there's rooms that are off limits right now. Like we, the billiard room is where they store everything, all the tables and chairs. That should, we should have elevators, but all of that can be stored in the basement so that room can be available. And same with the library. The library is exquisite, but right now it's just closed off. Um, wow. It should be open. And if you had a tent, you could have cocktails and things inside, and you could, and you could heat tents with air conditioning tents, right? I think we could do a live clue. <laughs> yes, I'm not right. even kidding you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We could do a live clue. Yeah, yeah. 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 this be a huge yeah. fundraiser. Get out, come on. Right? <laughs> true. So, anyway, so there's a lot more to come on that one as well, but that's, that's a project that's underway and seems to be moving along. The um, time frame for all of this is, well, the IOTA team has to have theirs all wrapped up by Thanksgiving. Um, we want to, on our end, have everything ready for budget season, which is January. Okay, moving right along. Um, work stream updates. Who wants to tell us about what they've been working on? Does anybody have anything? Any of you guys online or um, or here? Anybody, Rita, you said you had notes. So, Jack, I'm, I'm apologizing because I wrote everything you talked about out and I typed it up and I forgot it. So I'm going to go by memory <laughs> and if I'm missing anything, jump in, okay? <laughs> right. um, He's nodding yes. So, yes. I'm, I'm just, so, so we've had lots of conversations. I, I, I still think you know, we, we haven't gotten down the, the work stream yet. We're still kind of formulating, right? Right. Our ideas. So we're talking to a lot of people. So I had a really nice long conversation with David Denbys over oh, Gary Ann. He's a developer. He's very, you know, very successful guy. He was, he came to us. He like, told me. Yeah. And he's, I need to be happy to come back to because I'm like, maybe we need you to come back. Right. I had conversations with um, Laura and BJ, spoke with um, Lynn Brooks Abney in terms of, right? So we've had lots of conversations and we're talking. And so we're trying to formulate, first of all, like I think that the biggest thing was, okay, what's really our goal? <laughs> and if, we've already decided that the market said we need demand, demand side of this, and it's, it's kind of, it's futile. I mean, it's uh, obsolete, right? We need to start, we need to think differently and we need to, to, to do this over again, but should we do it the same way? And I think we all agree that it's, we, we don't want to do it the same way that it's been done. So that's one thing. So I think we wanted to start with goals. What are we trying to accomplish? So we, we talked about it and we really think it's, it's and I'm gonna throw out some stuff, but we're, we're still formulating it, but to support and encourage the development of a, of a vibrant business community that is relevant to the needs of our citizens and visitors, and I can send you this, okay. um, to minimize empty storefronts and reduce turnover lag time, and to attract new businesses, land and like, landlords is kind of the key thing, um, businesses, landlords, and, and, and to cultivate those relationships with um, folks that have consistent values, as as new payment has. okay right so in order to cultivate these relationships and 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 find people like that we need to understand what our values are and what we're standing for so i think we want to start there but it's really kind of in two groups right there's one is um how do we get new tenants in and attract new people that we want and it's also once they're here how do we support existing so it's kind of like two things that are really really important um and, you know in terms of finding opportunities and so, you know, just in, in brainstorming and talking about different areas of, of opportunity, um, and, and this is where it's going to be a little jumbly, but in talking with David, you know, I, I was, I asked him, I said, do you have a uh, consulting company or do you talk, like, where do you get your ideas of, of who to bring in? Oh. And he was like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't use anybody. He does the work himself. And he's kind of like, he's a unique individual, right? So he's got his relationships, he's traveling around. Um, and he's got that incredible software program. That well, that's the other thing. So I'm gonna, that's number two. But number one is, um, and, and I don't know if we can replicate this, but he gave me the ideas of different um, areas throughout the country and also locally. Um, just areas that have just nailed it. They're just, you know, they have the right mix of businesses and, and they are, you know, um, more experiential or more like just serving more relevant mm -hmm. to today and he just gave me some ideas of things that we could just you know visit or whether it's online or in person so that's just to get ideas right um so i thought that was interesting did he give you indications of, of where specifically yeah he did i mean i mean there was a place in norway he literally gave some place in indiana like he literally gave me some okay. places to, to right. start looking and i'm sure there are a lot more and he could probably give us a lot like even more 
Yeah. So I think that was it. But so people need to do this. I mean, like, yeah, we could form a group and, and visit these places and take our notes. But I don't know if, you know, he doesn't use a consultant, but it's because he's doing it all. I don't know that we, maybe we do need someone to help us kind of mine all these places and look at all these places. But that's one thing, right? right. The other thing is the tool, because um, it's like Placer AI is what he called it. And it's a, it's a tool that can scrape any business. So you, and so you're nodding. So you yeah, because he's presented it to us. Right. Yeah. So you already know it's that. Yeah. So understanding the foot traffic and, and revenue potential, all of that. So you can identify, you know, best in class examples here. You can identify who's struggling. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, being able to help those who are struggling, you know, learn from those who are doing well. And also using that information to attract other businesses as well. So I think that, um, and just being able to quantify and, and like, yeah, we've never been able to do that. Right. I think that's an amazing tool. Right. That 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 would be something on my list of something we should buy or I know we should we should invest in. Well, we'll be looking at when we looked at Buxton. How much was that going to be? God, it was like sixty thousand dollars or something yeah. for the first year. This uh, is a place for AI. Is that something different? Buxton? It's different. It's the same. It's a data mining. Yeah. Um, zip codes and, and we kind of presented it to a bunch of landlords and said, "Hey, should we all go in on this?" And it was just like. Yeah, no, I mean, they're not gonna, they, yeah. they have too many, they have to pay rent, they have to pay, right. they're not gonna, okay. right. it's either that, I think, you know, of course, David is a developer, so he's right. gonna right. invest in it, he's right. it. Yeah, he needs it, yeah, personally, it's, it's, it's profitable for him to invest in that, and I don't know as a town if you think that that's a profit, you know, yeah, but that's it's something that we should look at again. I mean, if, it, if it's this one that he has, or we should see what the pricing is like now. And well, remember, he's a private developer, yeah. you know, and he's, and, a and, and he's a landlord. And so he constantly has spaces. Right. Plus, he's creating that incredible development. Right. Yeah, I think it's good. It's, it's tough to get a municipality to invest because it's ultimately going, no, it's going to be great for the tax base and everybody else. But ultimately, we're not like profiting from that Correct. directly. It's, Correct. it's different. It's that, different. That's why we sort of went to some of the landlords and said, hey, is this something that we, we could all share this information as a group? But no one seemed to. And, and we also don't have as many. Like when I was researching the Buxton thing, I had a great conversation with a woman who's in charge of the Bangor Mall and trying to get people into this enormous space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's her job every day. Right. And she's got X number of square feet to fill. Um, and we're, you know, we're doing, we're doing, we're getting there. Yeah. It, it, it is a constant struggle though, is how to go out and recruit businesses to come here. Right. And I think that's it. By the way, so I kind of equate this to when I was working, you know, customers. So I worked for PepsiCo and we were trying to attract customers. And so one of the things that we did, so it's not just about giving money, it's about giving tools, like being right. able to, have access to special tools that could be an incentive mm -hmm. that could also be like it's not, not a tax incentive it's not giving the money back right. but you know if you're again if you're attracting the right people that that find this valuable that are going to use this tool to be successful those are the kind of people that you want so you put that out and you say we're going to offer this to you as you know you right. come in and you have a business in your hand you get access to this you know this tool to make you successful yeah. that's a nice incentive right does anyone else i don't know any other town that would offer that maybe they do but right. I think that's a really nice thing that we can offer people. That would be an added yeah, ways for them, you know, where, where are your best customers going to come right. from? How should you put your marketing dollars? Like kind of like a mini ad agency marketing firm, you know, dedicated to the businesses we have in town. Right. And do they get regular, can they get access to regular reports or whatever? So something interesting, and I think we can figure out what that model is, but that is where the an area of investment I think would be really interesting. Um, so that's, that's in terms of you know, tracking people and, and all that. Um, the other thing is I do really, I do think we need to establish like, what is what is the McKinnon brand? Like, what is that? And you talked about the brand consultants for, you know, for Wigney, but like, I think as a greater project, like what, what does McKinnon stand for? How do we differentiate from other towns? Like, and what's our, you know, you know, what's, we're laughing. The next well, stage is happening. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I literally, I mean, I do that for a living, but I, you know, just for a living. <laughs> and I know that there's a conflict of interest there. So maybe if we could find someone else who would do that, I could probably recommend someone. But I think that's really, I think that, I mean, you start there again, you know who you're going to be, um, um, you want to attract to your town. Yeah. And Jack, and, and I'm talking to Jack and Susan, I think this is going to wrap this up. Um, it's not just cultivating or, or the relationships with the businesses, but it's attracting the right kind of landlords. And I know we have our landlords, but like there's turnover or whatever. Um, David Denbase is an example of an excellent landlord and people love to right. rent from him, like using those learnings and whether you're cultivating that same sort of person, 
or attracting the same kind of person, you can also be cultivating that ethical. And, and I don't, I don't know how easy that would be. We have less turnover, I think, in ownership abilities here yeah. than certainly than other. Who would they be interested in, like you know, uh, listening to the some of these give a you know a, a, a TED talk on right. you know how to be the best landlord and get the most bang for your buck? I don't know, but yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's like again, if, if we're in Canaan and we're all about making you the best business person you can be or whatever, and like innovating, and then we offer these tools, that's a way of attracting really smart business people, right? So again, that's that's all in the, in the ways of attracting and, and, and doing that sort of thing. And then on the other side of things, um, for people that are here, how do we drive more awareness to the stores that are here? Um, how do we make it easy to shop here? And that those are the two subjects there are, you know, parking, right? So parking is one thing. And again, this is we can't do this, but we can make our recommendations. I know when I came here in 2019, I had no idea where to park. And then when I did go to park at Thermos, like I didn't know if what the times were like it was very confusing to me and i think that would be an easy like fix to just like to make that people aware of that and 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 to have better signage and believe it or not since the beginning of time i mean we have made huge improvements in the parking information just but i agree yeah. I'm, I'm coming in late so i'm just yeah. telling you my experience yeah 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 yeah, I'm sure you've done a lot, but now we have to keep moving, right? Right. So like, I mean, just the me fact that we've got the employees <laughs> off of Elm Street is huge, yeah. and then we've got the mobile app now, which the is, is which that is, the pay by phone? That's that is just wonderful. taken off, which is awesome, <laughs> and and use it again, but there's missing information, just missing pieces. Of it. It's just optimizing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If yeah. you already have that thing, so I sat down. We you know, we had a conversation, Laura and BJ and I, and we talked about you know living in Canaan and all that, and like how do we um use that maybe as a tool. Um, uh, to drive better, you know, awareness and drive people into town and all that other stuff. And we talked about, oh, you know, when you go to a mall, you run your phone and you're like, oh, where's the Nordstrom? Oh, there it is. Like, I didn't know it there. Oh, there, I didn't know that store was here. Like, I think there's people, people, including myself, who I didn't even know half the stores over here exist. I didn't even know they were there. Yeah. But if, if there was a way of easily finding that out, like while you're sitting there, visitors that come in, they're used to, people are used to using this as a tool, mm -hmm. as an information tool. And to be able to, create something and eventually we talked about making it an app but that's kind of more futuristic but mm -hmm. today we have a, um, a website we can optimize mm -hmm. and we can create like a better more um uh, what's it interactive map mm -hmm. just you know by right. that's that's part, that's part of it. yeah mm -hmm. so i think there are things we can do to optimize something exists existing that we already have and with me canon so we don't start from scratch right but we do again i think there's investment that's needed to optimize both of those tools to make them um, much better for um, not only people who live here, but who people are coming in to make it easy. You can offer promotions, you can talk about you know, gift suggestions. I mean, there's so many ways you could use that. I think um, the timeline this Christmas is so big that you're not sure if you order online, it's going to get there in time. You better just get there in time. <laughs> and right? how about this? Like, here's like, you can have, you literally can have gifts, gift ideas for men, and then what they are and, and where to get them. Like, it's, I, there's there's so many opportunities to drive you know better business and a lot of it you can use these days you can use AI you don't necessarily have to have somebody doing it there's there are AI programs that pull all this information automatically they scrape it and they put it together it, it just needs to be set up and it does need to be maintained so you don't need someone manually doing it all but you do need someone overseeing it and making sure it's you know right. it's working so that's another area I think of investment that would really help so again there's the the one side, which is getting the people, the right businesses in, and the other side, which is when they're in, how do we, you know, um, promote promote them and, and just opt like, you and know, enhance, optimize enhance their business. operations yeah. and, and, you know, make them more successful while they're here. But, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot there. You're right. There's there's several areas that we could do a better job. I know, and I could literally write all that up for, like, an astronaut. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I'm arguing. <laughs> um, but, and, you know the um, the library and the chamber for years sponsored the um, small business big ideas. It was a series of workshops that we would have yeah. that would be through the winter months, and we would have all sorts of speakers come in for free. Yeah, and they could come and learn. I can't remember some of the topics that we had, but um, everything from what do you need to know in the legal documents and yeah. thinking of opening up a business? Yeah. What do I have to get? What do I need to know? That kind of thing. And that's another, isn't that another group that's doing that is doing that right now? The, the business development. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, the business development guide is more about um, if you're opening a business here, what do you need for in town hall? Like, what, what do you have to do in the municipality just to get started? Where, where do I tell my employees to park? How do I register the business? Right. All that. How do I get a sign? What are the sign uh, right. laws or the requirements that right. I have? So all of that. But but to your point, whether you're opening a business or coming here to shop, you want to remove every barrier that you can. Yeah. That you can control. Yeah. Right. And make sure that parking is as easy as can be. Right. That every store looks as good as it can. Right. Inside and out. Um, uh, and there are just two things I didn't mention, and, and that and Jack might have said it, but um, he had mentioned this. Um, so one thing is we want to relook at zoning like it, like nowadays smaller footprints that there are a lot of opportunities for smaller footprints. Um, whether it's like you know a store that's just focused on kind of one thing and it's very small and it, it's people are looking to get the highest profit per square foot right. and there are a lot of um, ideas out there uh, that are like would be very um, relevant to our citizens needs or the visitors needs that are at smaller footprints. Mm -hmm. So that's also something to think about. I don't know how you would do that. I don't know how you plan to cut up their store, but again, like small. I, I think the market will take care of that. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, and well, we, we see it. On, on right. Yeah, so, right. So, so that might be it. Yeah. And the other thing is I think what we could do literally tomorrow is do a survey. Um, and I can put that together for, you know, asking locally what people are interested in you, you can kind of frame it so that you're getting answers that are productive but like asking people you mean surveying your residents surveying residents and surveying the businesses like and landlords like you know what are your struggles today what are you know what would you like to see differently and, and you can frame it so it's not just people complaining about yeah. stuff that we can't do anything about right, right? You, you can direct the questions <laughs> <from judges>. um, <laughs> yeah so that's not being answered like out right. of these five things you know what's there's, well, they do. Um, yeah. At the farmer's market, I'm really impressed with some of the um, entrepreneurs yeah. that have created a product. Um, and I don't know whether those are products that are eventually targeted for um, a storefront. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I think that those people should be surveyed. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to go with this? Mm -hmm. What are your What are your future plans? And also um, the consumer who are out at the farmer's market. Right. What would you like to see in town? Because right. it's a very um, community-based um, Organic. Consumer. It would be an organic way. Of, and I love that you said that. And it connects with something also that Jack had said as well, which is how do we identify up and coming out entrepreneurs who would want a storefront? And wouldn't it be cool? And this is just, this is, this is a total, it went, I'm going right to tactics here, but it's just, I think it'd be a cool idea. If we did like a new paint and sharp paint. No, we talked about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh so yeah. yeah. But like using those, but, but targeting these people entrepreneurs, yeah. saying like we would, I don't know, help them start up. We just like, needed somebody to give us a storefront. And you don't have that. Well, you, I mean, we would try, but it would be, that would be a fabulous yeah. idea. Yeah. Okay, so it's all, all of these are still good ideas. Good ideas. And ones that could still be explored. We're in a very different world than we were when TDAC started back in 2019. And it's jumping the gun a little bit, but I think we should also be asking worse than list off a whole bunch of new businesses that are moving to town, I'd love to find out from them, you know, why are you here? What, right. where did you come from? Were you always wanted to be in New Canyon? I know, you know, 299, she said, she's got a store in Fairfield and, and this was her dream to have another store. Yeah, no, I and, think- And do you have friends? Right, you know, right. Yes, relocating. So we, uh, the good news is 112 Main Street is now for sale. That's that big eyesore oh, across yeah, the street. The windows, the um, small, divert, I, I got a call from the guy at Cushman and Wakefield who had been at our broker's meeting, you know, just kind of batting some ideas around. So I got a proposal together for him. I said, oh, this would be a great opportunity to put the sketches in the windows. I had the print woman come down came up to be about with design and installation. It's, kind of I mean, it's six, uh, it'll be about 2,500. I thought, great, I'll come to you guys, ask if we could pay for half. No, he won't do it. So then he went to the guy. I said, here's what they look like. No, no, he, he'll, he'll, he'll clean up the brown paper. He's trying to sell the building now. So talk about attracting a landlord. I mean, that's the type of space we really like, a dynamic landlord who wants to fix up that space. That front, to your point, uh, you know, cut those into smaller pieces right, because no one's going to. Right now is you know two or three stores, and, and there was an antique store there too, which was like a double store. So that's great news. 
you know, they do have a number 299. If anyone hasn't been in there, Jackie Fusigna has got beautiful stuff it, yeah. in there. Yeah. yeah, it's really great. Um, other good news is Found, which was over on Elm Street, uh, has doubled their space and they're now uh, across the street and down on Elm Street. So that's a great story. Uh, uh, space NK. Yes. Space NK. Um, so there's a, there's a national chain that went out. Um, same with Papyrus went out and in went a uh, beautiful gallery, the Cass Reese Gallery, and then a, a, a store that's been here that is now doubles her space. Um, that's a great story. The other great story is there's a business called Americana Memories who started just being a caffeine carburetors. He came to sidewalk sale. He is now, uh, right now, really open, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. He sells um, penance and penance. College. Uh, antique, you know, unique uh, cigarette silks and things like that. Yeah, Different college. Right. Oh, so right. he yeah. he just told me that. So he's been, you know, kind of tenth month to month because uh, in that space, it's the space yeah, right I'm next to Chef Louis, Louis. Uh, the old irresistible space. He's been in there done really well. The stuff is very high praise. It's very unique. Uh, he sources it from all over the country. He is now renting. Full time, he said. I, I can make it here, um, so that's a great success story. He's going to go into Found's old space. You know what? He should strike up a relationship with uh, the framer. Yes, because that's right. he sells the things right. on cardboard. Right. Yeah. And there could be such reciprocity. That. That's right. Take yeah. it to him, and right? And you get ten percent off. I think she'll give yeah. you know, a little bit of a deal there. Yeah. That's a good suggestion. So that's great news. I mean, all of that. You've got someone who's opening up their second location here. You've got someone who's expanding. You've got another local person opening a gallery, and you've got someone who was just here month to month. And is now scooting into a, a new cigar shop coming in. Well, yeah. So this, the, the, then there's a cigar shop who is looking at a space on South Avenue. It sounds like they've got more work to do with planning and zoning. That would be interesting. It's too bad they didn't wrap themselves up quickly because now that everyone knows, I know I've seen them in other towns. A lot of times they're 21 and under, but I think there's going to be a lot of people upset about that. Yeah, 21 and older. Yeah, 21 and older. <laughs> 21 and older. I don't know if that's his intention, but I was looking. There was a landlord who approached me a while ago who got approached not by him, but another guy. So I went to look at, at that shop in Richfield. It's, you know, it's a full toke shop. It's, yes, there's cigars and cigarettes, but there's a vape. And then there's all the marijuana paraphernalia, wow. you, you know. So I, I I don't know what this guy's going to do, but mm. you know, calling it a cigar shop, and and I think people are going to have a problem with it. Um, and it's right there when the kids come in from town, right by the hamburger place where they all go to. Burger. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. listen, we'll, we'd like to fill that space. It's the old Cobble Court space. It's a beautiful space. Um, but I guess they have some more work to do because it's a change of use with planning and zoning. Um, so we, you know, we something, feel, we think Caledonia B might be something happening. Yeah, there's something going on there. I don't know. Uh, and then, the, then where Americana Mem Memories currently is, uh, there is some sort of food place, uh, some sort of healthy food grab and go. Uh, it's, it won't have a full kitchen, I think, to stop it. So we're getting there right now. When I look at my very, very unofficial. Um, they can see rate thing. Uh, we're at about seven percent. So you're saving eight foods. There's one more thing I just forget, and that is serving what I think are underserved parts of our community in a better way. And there are two ends of the spectrum, which are the kids and the older adults, which I feel like those are both pretty big like populations that are that are actually growing, right? Yeah. But because new people are coming in and because our population is aging. Um, I was looking at franchisees. I was going to be a franchisee at one point. I was looking at franchises. And there are a bunch of these like, ideas um, of services that are targeted toward older folks. I'll give you an example. I'm not saying this is perfect, but um, there's a concept where it's it's basically workout for a uh, workout for an older adult. So you have machines and you have people, but it's a smaller footprint. And there's they're a very specialized machine, and there's like it, it's a complete workout for older people. Wow. Yeah, and it, and it's doing really well in, in the place. It's got to be in the right place. You got to be right. in a place where they where you have that. Yeah, parking and all that. Mm -hmm. No, actually, a lot of a lot of it's 
Not always. No, oh, really? The key is really the key of the demographics. Yeah. Having the people. Yeah. Um, but it's like it's like 55 and over. It's, it's an interesting concept. Um, again, that may not be the concept, but just catering to that yeah. audience that I think is underserved. And then I see kids over. My, my son's begging me to open up an RP. He's like, you can have town Can you do something for kids? <laughs> to go. And I see, and I spent one night, like, I'm at dinner and the kids are running around. There's no place for them to go. And I know that there's a teen center at one point. I just think like that that could it could be a good business a good idea for businesses and if, if it's done right mm -hmm. um, and uh, and it's it's serving our, our kids and it's giving them more productive things to do yeah well and that having having a great like someone who's kind of joking with me but they weren't to take the movie theater and be able to do like a gaming arcade yeah. because people watch other people play video games well like uh, a pinball machine like what's right? a, right? why someone love a pinball machine <laughs> that, I don't want to shoot them up game like you know it doesn't have to be like it could be the fun, interactive, like yeah. just stuff that, yeah, you know, I don't know. Just, when, yeah. when they fix the seat, I, when they, when you talk about redoing the playhouse, we talk about putting new seats in. Yeah, we're going to get to that. Yeah. We're gonna get oh, to we're going to talk about that? that? I thought that had gone yeah. by yeah, a while ago. Yeah, it's coming back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. It's a multi-step <laughs> process. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no, no, no. That's no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so that's where we are. That's kind of the downtown. I think, I think there's some good momentum going on. Um, you know, it would be great. I, you know, I don't know what's going to be involved in selling that building. I heard that he's asking a lot of money for it. He's an absentee landlord who inherited the building. Um, so I don't know if and when that'll sell, but to get a dynamic landlord in there would make a huge difference yeah. in that side of the street. So that, yeah, that's, that, that's a big hole over there. Yeah. All right. Did you have a question? Well, just wondering if we have any. Um, shop owners and may have had shops elsewhere that they could come and talk to us about what's good here and what yeah that's we're thinking like with the 299 yeah she's got one in fairfield we would want to talk to her um american memories kind of fits that bill because he's been in other towns but now he's really finally came to be home and so why is right that, yeah. so that's what we need to do we need to put some questions together and, and do some man on the street interviews with these guys and then check in with them you know but six I months know want to have them come to do that Mm, yeah, good. some of them. Uh, ski and sport is back. They find places okay. where they can do a six month yeah. rental. Uh, you know, so uh, I think that's what they figured out works from them. You know, having a 12 month lease doesn't work. So they're happy to pop around and people find them and are happy to find them. That's a good suggestion. If, if you know, if any of them wanted to come, um, come to a meeting and tell us what the experience has been with it. I mean, I think it feeds into what Reed was talking about. Yeah. Getting that question. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Jack. Hi. I'm going to speak up like the rest of us are. Okay. Just a couple of questions. So you mentioned that handbook. And so at, where are we with that? Are we close to getting that handbook? No, because we're, we're waiting for the town planner is really swamped and so she's going to provide the, the bulk of it and then we're going to build it out. And Brock, that's Brock's leading that, and we have had a meeting, but we're we're waiting on. But they have already developed, a, you know, a whole insert on the permitting process, and they've gone through mm -hmm. and looked at all the different sections. Um, but the the lion's share of the work is going to have to be done by Lynn. Um, it's going to be great. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a work in progress, but she's just putting out one fire after another. But BJ right. had a great start on on yes the document you put together it was very user friendly yeah good start no so, I think it's just a I great a great thing to have yeah yeah I don't think it's going to be um, too long it's just we have a good structure um, but we just need her she she really has all the information okay and the second question I have is um, we had the uh, that meeting with the landlords and the uh, commercial brokers, and is there another brokers. one? It was just brokers. Okay. Yeah. Um, and maybe it could be expanded. Just for what we're talking about is getting, you know, information flowing in town with the landlords. Uh, or is another meeting planned? No, not yet. We didn't. We thought about okay. it. We talked about it. We didn't really have any more information to share necessarily. Um, we were still in the middle of COVID. So it's probably time. I think um, that would be a good January opportunity is to mm -hmm. have them all meet again. Um, so we need to have one. It's just been a matter of timing, really. Yeah, because the feedback I got, it was it was just a real healthy meeting that people could share ideas yeah. and and brainstorm. So 
But if you if you invited some landowners uh, or uh, landlords, that would also, I think, get a conversation going in the direction that we were just talking about with Rita. We specifically did not include landlords in this meeting. We wanted to talk to brokers so, so we could have a real honest conversation. But that doesn't okay. mean we couldn't have yes. a sound. Well, and, and yeah. we, we've met with landowners before, so. Yeah. Okay. Well, we, should, we, we should schedule another one. And the presidents can come next time. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I did, I, I did love that story about found. And I think there's a lot of stories in town, including my story. I started out with one store and then I, I doubled the size of it. I rented another space. So the idea of bringing an entrepreneur in uh, over time, they will hopefully grow and then also spread the word about the town to other entrepreneurs. I mean, it happens well, a lot. You're, it's you're it's a very healthy. Uh, your the the not tenants, but your um, customers from uh, Luscious, right? They have they have um, salons in other towns, right? And they chose New Canaan. Yeah, they did, and uh, exactly, they had heard about town. They had done a lot of work. Uh, those women are very good entrepreneurs, so they and they just zero they just zeroed in on you know the demographics, the uh, the wealth of the area, and they felt they could make it. But also, just so you know, that landlord offered a very, very uh, attractive first year rent. Right. So we had talked to him and said, you know, nothing's really renting. Maybe right. one way to, to attract somebody is by offering an attractive rent. And that did make a difference for, for, for the uh, those owners. They look like they're so, getting close to opening. We're hoping or, they open November 1st. Yeah, Lauren popped in the other day. I mean, front, everything looks yeah, really great. Really nice. yeah. yeah, so maybe like early winter, we could have them after they're, they've got a couple yeah. months under their belt and Jackie from 299. Right, that would be a good combination. Good suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's the name of the store. Yeah. 299. Yeah. 299. Because there was another number you said. Is that the name of the store? You said 119. Uh, one at the 112. Well, 112 Main Street, yeah. which, is, which is for sale. And number 299 <laughs> is on 112. Okay, I'm sorry. So, and then I'm pointing wildly over there because that's, that's the direction it's in. Have, um, have you guys had a chance to get anything done? No, I would say we really haven't been. Um, I, well, there's October sign's been happening, and that's yeah. really. Yeah, and I, I'd like to hear um, a little update on October for the sign. I know we're not. Yeah, let's do October. It's just around the corner, but Karen, how things were at Grace Farms, yeah. and um, how things were over at the Glass House. I was on um, most of the tour and went to one of the events. and. Yep. It was just great buzz, great energy. But did it start in St. Lawrence? Is that where I saw the big three buses? Yes. It's in, oh, that's okay. Last time I think. Yeah. And the Palm Springs group, Jack, yeah. came and took up one of the buses, and they were hugely enthusiastic yeah. about their visit. They came to the Glass House on Friday, mm -hmm. and then they went to uh, the Modern House Day Tour on Saturday. And some of them actually came to a uh, reception on Sunday at the Glass House that was thrown by. One of our donors. So, so what was the feedback? What was the... the feedback was great. I think it, it was really well done. Um, and I think we're, you know, you get an audience from Palm Springs, you've got enthusiastic people coming through. So of course that, that goes a long way. Um right. I wish Nancy were here to talk yeah. more about it, yeah. but uh, um, but the organizer from Palm Springs, the yeah. whole modernism week was here yeah. and he was beaming and I went up afterwards and just thanked him for coming and we're so happy to have you here. Please come back again, bring oh, yeah. people. But they seem to be really pleased with what was put together. I think um, what Nancy had said about the, the last time I talked to her was all the ticketing events had sold out. Yeah. Pretty early on, mm -hmm. um, there were still a lot of the programs over at the historical site, which were unlimited, so anybody could pop in. But Karen, did you have them all up at uh, Grace Farms as well? Yeah, they did a tour and they had lunch and it was so well received and what an engaged group of folks. So grateful for the time at Glasshouse. And of course, Laura was there. She was Laura Pla. Uh, <laughs> it was it was really remarkable. We were so, Grace Farms was so grateful to be part of it. and. Um, we're hoping, we're hoping for, as you said, Amanda, ongoing engagement with these folks. Well, and Laura Bud and I went out 
to the gallery stroll last Thursday night, um, which was five galleries, five or six galleries. That's great. It was great. They all had a buzz going on, you know, in That's terms really of the whatever was on the walls, or they had the artists there, and um, it was terrific. So it was, and the restaurants were full. The restaurants were full. And our town, and it was, I can't, what was last Saturday? Like, it was a nice day, right? Yeah. So everything, yeah, good time of year to do it. So that, you know, October for Design started here, you know, in a lot of conversations, and Nancy Gary and Laura really, you know, ran with it, obviously, but um, mm -hmm. I think that's going to be something that is only going to grow by leaps and bounds going forward. Where did all those people stay? So, yeah, yeah. Nancy had reported on that at one point. It was hard to find. Um, there was obviously we don't have anything here, so I think they were over at the Zero. Zero. Hotel Zero. Uh, Hotel Zero. Zero. Yeah. Zero. And right off the Merritt on Norwalk. Yeah. yeah. So, and they said it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Great restaurant. Yeah. yeah. Good. All right. Um, so we just touched on October for design. Um, Amanda, you want to talk about Playhouse a little bit? Yeah, and you can kind of chime in. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, there are a, a number of people who have assembled, I think, three times now um, to talk about the Playhouse, to brainstorm about the Playhouse, coming from different perspectives. Um, Kevin Moynihan has been at those meetings, and um, Bill Osterman, who's in charge of buildings in town. So as you all have seen, they're scaffolding up, they're redoing the roof, a long overdue project. There's also a lot of repairs on the exterior of the building that just need to be done, just delayed. Um, the water literally is coming in in places. I mean, but in rain. addition to those kinds of um, high priority, we must do now things, um, we've been talking about what could be a viable revenue generating playhouse um with a new operator and what what could we imagine there so there's been everything from let's take down the wall um in between the two theaters and make one big theater because many of the smaller theaters in the surrounding area have had to close and so there's less competition actually and and how we're seeing it is that we could pull from um, not just from Canaan, but from surrounding mm -hmm. communities. And um, there's interest in first run music, uh, uh, movies. And what we've learned is that these operators or consultants for operators really can start to look at the demographics of a community and hand pick movies that they think will be successful. And so that relationship is really important. So that's one thing we learned. And it was recommended to us that given our demographic and comparable communities that a first run kind of the family movies because of the big kid population and first run movies more Hollywood blockbuster type movies are, are probably going to be the most successful from a revenue standpoint. Then there's a, a, another group of people in this interested small group, self, uh, self selected self appointed. Self -appointed. people that called up and said, I'd love to learn um, more. That are really interested in more of a fine arts kind of film um, program. center program. Um, something that could eventually become a film festival something that might even be overlapping with some of our modernism um, in New Canaan um, uh, interest. Um, so more of an art film, we know Garden Cinema in Norwalk closed. We know that it's a much more challenging um, and, and niche audience. So so there was an interest in maybe combining the two. It's a big space if the wall comes down. And so where the conversation actually moved is, could you maybe do like a two thirds of that big space as a bigger, um, for the first run movies to really always be generating revenue. And the smaller space could be 
maybe the, the bigger generating revenue film could then move into the smaller space or concurrently there could be other showings for a niche audience or a smaller audience, shorter term, um, but always keep that other larger space generating revenue. And then rentals in the smaller space, right? I, I, I could rent it for a birthday party. or Absolutely, a, not know, for right. profits renting. But one of the things that we've learned is that given our demographic and the non-compete aspect of other movie theaters having closed, that there is an audience that would really appreciate a more lush, plush, glossy experience with the big, bigger seats. Um, so the now. Yeah. That, which I, has a lot of models, some of them less and some of them more successful. Um, we, we know the Bedford um, movie theater has come. First, its mission was more of a, a fine art yes. film. And it's had well, I don't know if I should say yeah, this, but it's, but it's it, 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 it yeah. has it has to, it has had to switch gears because it has been less successful. Um, so that was really interesting that that experience again about movie going because so much, so many of us are just streaming movies at home. Why do you want to go to a movie? Again, it's that whole experiential quality of well, let's go and have a glass of wine meet with our friends before the movie um, and, and see the movie and go to dinner afterwards. So it's kind of the, the cluster of that experience. So um, of course, my interest is not only as somebody in TDAC and wanting to see New Canaan Thrive, but as an architect thinking about how, how would you grapple with this? And a lot of the, the challenge is the ADA, how to make that successful. Um, but I think, what I was also hearing is this, this interest in seeing if we could combine the two things. So I did, I did some, just some really diagrammatic things. It's so just, cool to be an architect. You've got all the good uh, toys. I know. Just to, to think about how this space could be used. And I've, I've let the small task force, the self-appointed task force know that to really do this properly, professionally, I need to know more about the building and we would need a, a proper survey and a proper as-built condition. So I kind of worked with what I could find, which was quite limited. We are gonna move ahead with that. We just have not, um, with the scaffolding up and that kind of thing, we, we haven't been able to. And you know, we've looked high and low, there are no plans that exist for this building in town hall. Nothing. Nothing. No. So not um, how about a historical? So I don't know if you guys can see yeah. this. I, I should have, you know, yeah, this is, you know, just very preliminary, but this is what we have now. Right. Right. I'm going to. You walk just, in the lobby to. to you walk to in the lobby. Theaters. Can you see anything up there? On no, the wall? I can't no? see it. No. No. All right. But well, you'll have to use your imagination. It's split no, down the middle. We remember. <laughs> yes, yes, you remember. It's split down the middle. And, and the purple here is, is public bathrooms where you buy your ticket and the concession. Yeah. Okay. So. So when I was thinking about, well, how would you subdivide this? There seem to be two plausible directions. One is side by side, but make one bigger, duh, right? Yeah. And the other is front to back. And the front to back is more challenging and that's where the information is that, that I would need to really solve it isn't there yet. Yeah, because there's a slope too. There's yeah. a slope and then there's a ceiling height and there's a gable yeah. and then there's a plate, you know, so yeah. it's a lot about the section. But if you can see this, hmm. this is side to side, okay? With the two thirds, one third. So this is two thirds, one third, and the one third has a small stage so there can be a panel, there can be post film um, uh, discussion. There could be a small stage, there could be a musical performance. It could be rented out. Maybe there's no rake, maybe there's no slope in this one so that it's more flexible. And then, you know, back of house support space. And then what I did is I put in an elevator so that the handicapped bathrooms all of the bathrooms can go upstairs in the former cha chambers space. 
soon to be former change. Yeah. 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 We're not throwing you on the bar. <laughs> on the street yet. Yeah. I'll come work in your house. Yeah. So that actually frees up a lot mm -hmm. of that's interesting for yeah. a little dining area. It's not a lot of back of house uh, restaurant support, and we don't want to take away from the restaurants, right? right. Um, but a wine bar. A little, you know, that's open for the evenings. Of course, you have to show your ID. Um, so, purple. What's purple here becomes public space. The Which is the model again of the Bedford Playhouse. They do have a restaurant, and you you use the storefronts to, you know, great lighting. You see people through the windows opening up, um, and then upstairs is where you put the bathrooms. And um, so you still upstairs is the the you know second floor of those spaces. So that that's one solution, and the other solution is simply going in the other direction and doing the double wide theater. One theater. One, but upstairs. I don't have any other. Upstairs you have the small art film flex space with a little stage platform. Upstairs. Have you been up there? Yes. Yeah, yeah, you've seen the ceiling. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, but yeah. upstairs is where the chamber is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and expanding, expanding, right. and so it's actually shortening the theater yeah. to make room for another space. I right. said this is a bigger chunk of work. Clearly. Yeah, right, right. right. Um, oh, cool. But just even imagining how you could so divide it, so at least the discussion could continue as to whether. That model, I think everyone's trying to figure out what the model should be, what would be best for the town, what would be most successful for the town. Um, and I thought we, we all thought it was really interesting to hear about how the movie, uh, the representatives of the operators can really start to target what kind of film should be here to increase the potential for success. Yeah, we learned a lot about the whole movie selection process. And once you commit to a movie, it has to run. Anytime you're open, it has to run. Um, so, you know, you, you might have to take it for six weeks. And that's why when you see a movie over and over and over again, the same location, you think, why aren't they changing up the movie? But honestly, it's but if you had a dedicated person. Or you could put it in the small theater. Right. Right? If you had Bond and it was week nine or Bond. But with the operator like that? I mean, are Sorry. you saying who's operating this theater? So we're talking to multiple operators at this point in time. And they will take less seats and or a smaller look. Yeah, we've been talking about it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. The, the, the challenge with one big theater is, you know, you have to. You know, the flexibility. You know, the flexibility. Right. So that's why there was talk of, you know, do you, right now it's 20, it's just 50% on either side. Um, so that's that's where we're at really now is trying to determine what is the best approach. And for the seats and the equipment and the sound the system. The equipment actually, the, the actual equipment up there um, was left behind by Bowtie. It's quite good. You just can't turn it off. It loses everything if you turn it off. So that building has been has been air conditioned and that uh, equipment is still running. Um, but yes, the seats would have to be um, would have to be. Yeah, replaced. I mean the whole place. The ceiling, the the the. Oh. the um, Fire suppression system needs to be completely replaced. Mm. Yeah, the, the doors leak. I mean, it's, it's a big project. Do you, do you think we'll get some ARPA money to help get that sort well, of? Well, that's that's something that has stayed on the, the list. It stayed consistently mm. on the top of the list for what's, some time. What's the estimate? Of well, something? so the dollar amount is what is to be determined. There is eight hundred. I think it's. Thirty-five thousand dollars. It's a fund that has been growing from all the rent from all the tenants. But isn't that what they're using to do the no, roof? No, roof is separate. The roof is oh, the roof separate. Yeah. Oh, okay. The roof was done. So there's that. Um, and then, I mean, it, it could be as much as four million dollars easily to get this done. There's part of the group. Um, there's a couple of folks in this in this group that want to spearhead funders. I mean, they they create its own nonprofit. Right. I mean, it's a landmark and it's going to be, what is it, 2023? Is that what we're doing? Or 22? Yeah, uh, in 2023. Yeah, yeah. and maybe the consultants can answer this question because I'm, I'm, I'm a big why person because uh, I have one of the most successful things I ever did for my company and it, it had failed prior. And I just to ask the questions, found out why it failed, fixed it, and it was one of the most successful things we did. So I just, I just would love to know 
why these things closed? Why they fail? What's what's the reason why so things fail? So Garden Center was closed because then the parking lot next to the salt and the building was built there. So they literally now have no parking. Okay. Um, the bow tie closed. They were not losing money. We we got to see their financials every year because that was part of the deal. Um, they closed because they got out of the business. They wanted to be in the real estate business. They just wanted to have these well, things. So they just want to close. They just well, it was COVID. I mean, so we were they were closed anyway. They were forced to close. Um, but then they just wanted the owners, you know, wanted out at that point in time and just become a real estate company. Okay. So um, the prospector is going alive and well in Richfield. Um, now that's more of a, of a special project, and that there's, you know, that the whole uh, mission is to employ um, young. Is it? Is it? I don't know if it's adults and yeah, mostly, mostly adults. Mostly adults. adults. Yeah, so it's a special need. Um, it's great. I mean, it's a great project up there. Um, the uh, the more artsy area, like the those things. So the Avon in yeah. Stanford, and they do a lot of that now because they're they don't have to comply with ADA and that kind of thing. That building, um, it's not ADA compliant. We are in this county. It's the right thing to do. Number one and number two, we have to, and so our, we're out of compliance on that. We have there is a bathroom in there right now that was the ADA bathroom, but you know you were saying also that some art it didn't do well, like it was like they had to close because they didn't. Well, no, no, no Bedford. Bedford just switched their model. Yeah. They were more um, they were more about the independent so cultural one. aspect yeah. and first run, and now they're shifting. They're they're right. they're, they're realizing. That I'm wondering why that. And only to inform how we right. more safe. well, and they also have a completely population density. Yeah. I mean, it's a gorgeous facility, yeah. and it's huge. It's much bigger than ours, and it's really a really publicly, you know, it's membership. They've got a lot of big money up there, um, but you know, and and they're it ends. That's it, yeah, and they're um, but they don't have the density. We have much more population. It's you know much easier to get here. Um, uh, the more, as I say, as, as Amanda said, we've met about three times, and I come out of each meeting absolutely more convinced that this is just an absolute gold mine waiting to happen here. I mean, we, it's got so much potential. And back to the town, the downtown, I mean, it would be, it would complement every single thing, every store, every restaurant, mm -hmm. all the activities. Um, so we we got to get moving on it, though. Um, I would only say I think I like the flexibility of yeah, because I think, I think if you have to keep a movie in there for so many, I mean, it's great to have something where you can show us a Disney film in a, in a, and have the kids come. Can you come. kid birthday parties? Yeah, yeah. kid birthday you parties. You could have a real estate company could come in and have a conference on the one side. And that's awesome, yes. Because right. I, yeah. I think I even, call, is it Avon in Stanford? Because yeah. I, would, I would call and want to do a meeting and yeah. have a meeting. Yeah, I call yeah. them. And they were booked up. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are ongoing conversations, but we're, we're definitely on to something and we have to, again, this, the timing on this is we want to have something for the budget process for the, for the town, which starts in earnest in January. So uh, we're trying to get everything nailed down. So if we can take the 800 plus possibly some of the ARPA, we could maybe get that infrastructure stuff that needs to be right. done what? and then raise money privately to for do them. Right, right. So it'd be a lot of money. Yeah. But we have I, to have a plan. Yeah. You know, you can always do things in, in different yeah. degrees. Right. But, right. Sorry. So I'm sorry. So the town would be running. So the town would be. The town would love to turn it over to an operator to run it. Right. Or a nonprofit to just turn it over. Town doesn't want to run the theater. Town doesn't want to be an operator. Okay. Um, but we do own the building. Got it. Which, so which has advantages, right? right? I mean, we control I hear you. that alleyway that comes down from the parking lot, mm -hmm. you know. If that were owned, if the theater were owned by a private um, individual or whatever, they could build right up next to a kind of thing. Now we're going to forever put a deed restriction in there, so that that's such a critical artery to getting people from mm -hmm. the parking. So, for example, there's no survey that exists showing that alleyway. No. So that's all good. We could expand out the back a little bit. Well, that's the beauty of it is we own the parking lot in the back. Right. So we were talking about. Pushing that out a little bit and maybe putting the air conditioning equipment on the roof of that. Great idea. Right, because right, right now expensive. that's all. There's definitely, it. I mean, there's just dumpsters there now. But if, you know, in reconfiguring it, that's the, that's the only place you can go is out of the back. So. There's actually, Laura, you know, it's recessed right now. I mean, if you wanted to, you could even bump out to, to the front of where all the other stores are. Mm -hmm. No one would recommend that. But, right, but, right. Um, so, knowing those parameters, 
property lines, setbacks, all of that is, is so, so as soon as the scaffolding comes down, we're gonna get in there and get an as built and know exactly what we're dealing with, and then we can really fine tune the ultimate plan for the building. So yeah, the, the rain did not help them this week. No, I've been living very slowly. Yeah, I, I've been living with that. <laughs> she one day more sent me a video she said this is happening here literally the insulation was pouring out of a, a vent of an air conditioning vent. no right no it was coming right out of a hi hat it was into up to her knees insulation i was like get out of there you can't breathe oh my god all right it's all moving in the right direction um laura do you want to give a quick update on the barriers or is there really nothing i mean the barriers the restaurant that she doesn't no, have don't talk to me about barriers so this is an ongoing conversation as well. Barriers were put up, obviously, because of COVID to allow for outdoor dining. Everyone's loved outdoor dining last year. It was so successful all year long. January, February, people were out eating. You know, everyone brought in eaters. That beauty of that side of the street, like where Soleil and Rosie's and Chef Louis and Elm and all those are, is that it's a lot of sun during the day, even in a cold January day. It's very nice. Um, so, and the governor's rules are still in effect to some extent, so the barriers are still there. Four street barriers did come in. That was a, they all agreed that they wanted the parking back along the side of the yeah, street. Yeah, there's a little buyer's remorse on that. So. Is there? Mm -hmm. Well, you asked them all and they said that. But um, there's also some bump outs that we're building on Elm Street um, on a couple of those intersections. So the barriers are in place right now. The question is, when do they come down? And the answer is we don't really know. The police commission is dealing with it in each meeting. They revisit it. Um, the, there are a couple of merchants that want them gone. They just don't think that it's helping them. And it's a, all of a loss of parking. 15 spaces. Yeah. Um, but on the other they hand, there's a they couple of those, those same merchants who don't like them being up. They say, but I love seeing all of the people out and about eating lunch out there and dinner out there. Uh, every night. So it's again a balancing act, but um, as soon as the snow starts to fly, they'll probably have to have to go away. Well, last year we just worked around them. We just pushed them in and they clapped. No, they took them away. And then, you know, once they got all the snow out of there, they, they brought them back. back. Yeah. So, I mean, DPW's been place. amazing. Aren't there? Uh, are there better barriers? I mean, well, that's the that, that's the no one wants to invest now. I saw one where a town turned it to look like a Toblerone bar. I thought the uh, like a Jersey bar. Yeah, yeah, like it look, yeah, look at those total Rome bar. That, yeah. Oh, so they probably, probably total Rome paid for it. Right? Yeah, yeah. You could get yeah. yeah. no, like they're, really, they're really, they're really ratty. They're really ratty now, and there's all these pockets with water. And they, the guys did a great job for sidewalk sale. They took them away, took them back, hosed them out, bleached them out, and brought them back that same day. But they're they're pretty long in the tube. Uh, which is some people's complaint about them, and other people just want them gone because they want the parking back. Could we could we decorate could we decorate them with the same drawings we're putting in the vacant um, storefronts? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We could wrap them. Well, that's what they have right. at Norwalk. They do have the cement jersey berries, and they have these canvases that like the kids' handprints on them. They get all wrinkly. They just don't look great. You know, it's not a it's a kind of a messy look. I think if, if I were a betting person, I would say that they will probably stay in place until the bump outs are built. Tiger was going to bring the bump outs. So he was going to bring to the works like on Monday. He still may. He was working on some more information um, for approvals. He still says he wants to get it done before the, um, the plants, the basketball plants close in early December. So he doesn't think it's a big, I mean, a, a huge project and that he can't get it done in the next time. So. Uh, Greenwich just completed theirs and they look great. Um, so um, they do look great. They look great and they function really well. The, the sidewalks, the, the bump out, and if the whole they point is the bump outs for benches. Or they that? they used it for they have some space but they haven't done anything out of it. They did a lot of planting in them. They look good. They look like they should be there. Yeah, yeah. So, so we'll see. Stay tuned on that. Um. That, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of our program. Um, two things that we'll have to talk about. Our next meeting, believe it or not, is December 2nd. I can't believe we're talking about December already. But having said that, everybody's term is over in December because we all start at the same time, believe it or not, it's, um, terms are up. So I'd love for you all to individually email me and let me know if you'd like to continue um, to serve on TDAC. We can certainly reappoint anybody who wants to stay on. Uh, if anybody needs to leave, we understand that too, but let me know sooner rather than later so that we can plan for that. Um, and the other thing, just 
kind of a funny aside I'll give you with is that, and I think I might have talked about this with all the movies that were filmed here this past summer. Um, there's some some tax advantage uh, that has just happened recently for movies to be filmed back in Connecticut. Something about streaming, because so so many of the movies that were filmed were movies that are going to be streamed, not right. going to theaters or something like that. Yeah, there was some new something that happened because I'm getting calls all the time. In fact, the theater man, I didn't get a chance to say this. Got a call from one of my favorite scouts um, who said to me the other day, he calls me now and he wants to know anything about sort of Fairfield County. And he said, they're doing a new one. The last one that they did with me was the um, evolution of Wall Street, right? And they used Mansion as Mr. Goldman's house and it had all these different versions of, of Wall Street pioneers. But then he called me the other day and he said, now we're doing one, the evolution of Hollywood. He said, do you happen to know a good theater that's like kind of Cool old marquee that's mm -hmm. closed that we can rent for like a week. We'll pay. And I was like, oh. oh. And then I told him, I said, we own one that's closed. He said, I don't know. We well, it, could yeah. least, it could at least pay for some of these, you know, with this yeah. uh, information. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, anyway, I'll let you know more on that. Wait till he goes in there and sees it. No, no. He, he, he actually, well, I'm going to take him through it. <laughs> I told him, I said, it's, you know, one light bulb hanging from a pro. Right. They would recreate me. everything anyway. So, yeah. how long, yeah. do you know how long that when is that scaffolding going to be there for holiday stroll? No, 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 no. He said it was going to be three weeks, four weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not going to be there for holiday stroll. What, what's the date of holiday stroll this year? December 3rd, 3rd and 4th, the night of the 3rd. Okay. I mean, there are a lot of movies being filmed now in Westport. There's a movie being filmed because and of this whole change in Connecticut. I think it all and, came back. So that's another business development. Yeah. Is this business development guy work for the town? Is that what the, you mean, the scout? No, you were saying before a business development person. No, we have the business development guide. That's what I was referring guide. to. Guide. 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 Oh, guide. 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 That she was talking about. <laughs> no, it's all good. So, um, and then, you know, we started some of these meetings in the past with just a quick around the room. I don't know if anybody's got anything to offer. I mean, you gave an update on how are things at the glass house other than that good? I mean, yeah, you know, we're, we're operating four days a week instead of five, okay. um, a reduced number of tours. So we're sold out. And even like without the modern house day tour, we'd have been sold out anyway. Well, we're closing November 15th, oh. and that's, uh, well, because we don't have people inside the buildings, uh, they're right. subject to the elements for, you know, an eight hour shift yeah. or something like that. Um, well, so what about this, but the, um, did you have many, how many events were you allowed to have? What that well, we're allowed to have, I mean, four events of up to 150 people, but okay. You know, that requires uh, putting out some money with speculation about whether we will be able to attend. Right. So we really haven't taken advantage of, of that. We have done a number of uh, film shoots of varying sizes. We've, we've backfilled the hole that the reduced attendance has created okay. in, instead of using these special events to increase the funding of preservation work on the property. Mm. So. On one hand, it's good news. On the other hand, it's uh, you know yeah. a shame to waste those premium events on something right. Monday. You guys can't roll them over to the next year. <laughs> <clears throat> well, yeah, I mean that, that is an issue for us in terms of you know the town's ambition to uh, drive more tourism. The permit that we have is Look rather up. restrictive. Um, that article in the Financial Times was yeah. fabulous. Oh my gosh! Right? right? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. yeah. 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 Well, we get plenty of publicity, but right now we're really drawing from a four state area mm. instead of 50 countries around the world. Mm. But, our, our, but we're selling out, and our uh, the permit limits us to a theoretical capacity of only 15,000 a year, wow. <laughs> right? Right, and so our tickets are expensive. The good news <laughs> is that um, we did drop the price because the experience wasn't the same, and because of fewer activities to choose from and the lower price, we're getting more families coming to it. So younger people hmm. being exposed to architecture and art and things thing. like that. So yeah, we're trying to make a uh, lemonade out of lemons, as they say. Greg, how does the, the store do? The store is doing very well. Um, 
you know, we created an online store a number of years ago. Uh, stores had very favorable publicity in publications, including the Wall Street Journal. And I think a number of not yeah. all of you know Krista Carr anyway, and she uh, does an amazing job of getting placements around the world. Uh, so we do a strong online business. And you know, one of our problems is that the seasonality of the uh, site means that uh, people aren't coming through the store right. on a regular basis. And then right. one block beyond the downtown area and not so many people venture there. But do you do think a that store holiday? needs to be where the buses um, depart? Is well, there any reason that store couldn't be more central to it, downtown? It's, yeah, I mean, there's additional costs that would be involved in that. The store kind of evolved because we were required under the permit to have a visitor center have people come there. So it was staffed mm -hmm. to welcome people. And in the early days of the site, it was selling finger puppets and pencils. And if you sold everybody that came, one of each of those, you still don't have any revenue. Mm -hmm. So we've upgraded the product offerings in the store. And, uh, you know, it's doing it's doing very well. But the labor had to be there anyway. Right. So And the space was already there. And the space was there, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So Karen, what about everything up at uh, Grace Farms? How's it going now that you guys are reopened? Everything's great. It's interesting to hear you say that, Greg, about families. We're seeing that so much more. And I, we're trying to attribute it towards, you know, we have this Imagination Playground out. We have sort of these 15-minute experiences now with educators on site who are walking families and individuals through different experiences at Grace Farms. Um, we have a new sculpture, which may be a draw, but last Saturday we had 800 folks and Sunday there were 600. So we're seeing a lot of traffic, which is really wonderful, um, really engaging the site. And it's also great to start seeing our space grants come back because, you know, a lot of the nonprofits are either, you know, sort of in the trenches and haven't been able to work from home because of the populations they serve or people have been remote. But we're seeing an uptick now of applications for our space grants, which is really exciting. Um, on November, we had Tracy K. Smith last Saturday. Tracy is, uh, was the 22nd Poet Laureate, and um, that was really well received. Of course, you know, we're still at sort of limited capacity in the sanctuary. Um, right. And then on November 19th, on a Friday night, we're having the community dinner, which um, is, we're going to be bringing, bringing that back in sort of, um, you know, a little bit of a modified format, but bringing back live music and that kind of thing. Um, on November 19th, followed by a performance and lecture by a gentleman named Marcus Miller, who's both a musician, but also a Harvard educated mathematician and sort of talking about that balance between beauty and logic and math and music. And um, we're hoping that families will come to that too. So it's, um, it's an interesting, it's a really interesting moment, but it feels like, you know, when I walked around today, even asking people where they're from, there were a lot of New York City folks a lot of folks who had recently moved to New Canaan and then people who said, oh yeah, I bought a house during, in Litchfield or Ridgefield or Pound Ridge during, the co during COVID, so this is my first time here. So it's also this changing demographic about who we're seeing and who's showing up. And I think that's a good moment for New Canaan. Mm -hmm. And I think Rita, that really talks to many of the things that you were saying earlier about, you know, we all think of Rita knows where the park and what the stores are in the country, but we've got so many of the people who live here. Yeah. Um, maybe we need to think about that a little bit more. But what, what we really want to know is, did you meet Yay? I'm Yay. How do you say Yay? Yay. Yay. <laughs> that was exciting. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know. It's it's really, it's exciting. Uh, lot, yeah. lot of folks got good photo ops. Yeah, right. she did. Good photo ops. That's neat. And then Grace Farms Foods, is that, how's that going? Oh, the snacks, the, the bundles? Yeah, I I think I think it's going well, you know. I um that that part I don't deal with as much, but um we're getting really positive feedback. It's being sold um just at two places based on reg regulations that and um and and it's a way that we're sort of engaging new members too. We've rolled out this new member program, um so that's been sort of a nice way to welcome folks mm -hmm. in. But yeah, I think it's going well. You probably. Yeah. That? Well, I'm actually representing it, so it's it's doing very go. well, and it's on Amazon now. You can buy it on Amazon. So, really? yeah, so okay. it's, it's getting very well received. Yeah. Right. But Karen, you could be open only 20 days, and you'd have more attendance than I do. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, because hers is free. Yeah. I think there's more to it than that. Yeah. yeah. Right. That is a fact. Right. right. 
Mimi looked up yesterday for lunch and that was so nice and she's I know on your board and was talking so much about um just all the respect that she has for glass house and how you're navigating it with such with such grace not easy so when people go to get great shops like that from Litchfield in New York is there something that tells them about New Canaan I mean when they come to glass house do they get a I know we yeah. Earlier, we tried to work with even with ways to get them to not route them through past town. We tried to bring them through town so that they would see it. But I don't know, um, Karen, what I mean, originally we had. Um, I went up there when we launched Explore New Canaan. Right. I went up and I should probably go up again and met with kind of the, the, the uh, yeah. staff that introduces people and answers questions and stuff like that. So I should probably go reintroduce that. Yeah, and see what we could offer. Yeah batch of folks and i think that would be really smart you know my office is right there um, near the welcome desk so i can sort of hear some of those conversations and i do hear people asking you know where can i go where can i go after this have i need a coffee or are there any bookshops or so i do i do hear some of those questions and that would be smart laura let's connect on that right. is you know almost all entirely new yeah all right good i'll come back up and do that i'm going with you Oh, we can have lunch because that's all we do is we go around and eat lunch well, every day. Uh, that's that's a good one. Good thought. Yeah, we'll come up uh, next week or the week after, and we'll uh, grab lunch and make and talk to your team. You let us know what's a good day. You know, you years could. ago, I don't even know if Laura, you were with me yet when I was in the chamber, but. I did do a tour for all the people from, I, I think that. I had some people from from Glasshouse, Nature Center. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Grace Farms was open then. And I brought them all and I walked them around town because many of them don't live here, right? So I walked them around town and I said, oh, here's our bookstore and this is Rosie's and everyone you know, loves her. Yeah, we, should get that going. we should do that again so that they can recommend it if on their tour someone says, is there a bookstore here? Is there a monogram store here? Is there a gallery or whatever? We've got that information, but they also know it. So let's go. Let's go. Good. Good. Anybody else got anything? Yeah. I gave my update. So. Yeah. So all in all, I mean, I think in terms of the downtown, I mean, things are happening, which is exciting. At one building that Laura talked about, you know, the, the 112, if we can get that yeah. go moving. Halloween be. block party on Sunday. So that's a great thing. You close the street. You're going to have the ice rink there. I got Cares, Young Women's League. All these folks are going to take a booth, School of Rock playing. I've got a group from the high school that's got a musical coming up. I'm going to have them perform. Uh, someone from the Nutcracker group is going to perform. It's, you know, cheap and cheerful. We got 500 bags that have been, goodie bags that have been stuffed. I, so I think that. That'll be a nice day if we attract a lot of young families. Um, been doing a lot of social media. It's going to be my email that goes out tomorrow. And then we're just ramping up for holiday stroll. We're uh, already saw, start, started selling for holiday lights and for the lampposts. So, you know, we're Let's starting on. Um, we also had a meeting today, yesterday. It was like forever ago, but um, a debrief on, I don't know if any of you went to Kathy Barber's last week up at Waverly. It was amazing, but it was ginormous. Uh, 1,500 show cars, 5,000 people. I think of that. That's like 4th of July. And it almost put Steve, poor Steve, there it go. It did. It almost put Steve over the edge. Um, we love it. And I think what's happened is that has become such a, an event that draws from, we talk about from everywhere. Um, what we need to do a better job of is uh, just the whole sort of parking traffic plan and coordinating with. There were things going on at the high school. The buses were taking the football team over to Norwalk for a game. They couldn't get out. Um, there, I know there were some people that uh, were dropping kids off for things at the high school. Someone said there were SATs, but that's Saturday, so I don't know how that could be. There was apparently a huge backup on at exit 37 on Merritt. Um, just like it happens in trouble, you know, when everybody gets off to yeah. trouble. So those were all good problems to have, right? We had all, we had all huge management of, of the cars and parking, and I guess there were cars all over behind the Y. Talmadge Hill had cars on both sides. But the good news is there were so many people here on such a beautiful day, enjoying Wavy Park. And back to these interviews that the Iowa kids did, you know, majority of them didn't live here. So another opportunity to say, you know, bring on in town. And you know what they did that afternoon in town was mayhem. You couldn't get a cup of coffee at the drive. 
Um, there was a lot of business happening in town. There was a lot, right. Some people say, oh, those were new Haven residents anyway. I, I yeah. meant to differ. There, that was a very big thing. So. Dollars a dollar. Dollars a dollar, right? Whether it's from home right. or from far away. Yeah. They're not big shoppers. A lot of people were like, how are the stores not out? But traditionally, it's not been a big boon for retail. The bookstore has started That's, to do a little well, yeah. but uh, obviously for the food. So have they ever had the ever thing? Yes, mm -hmm. we've done it. A, a, a handful of them have done it over over the time. And I mean, although Elm Street Books did have a good. Elm Street, it's worked well for Elm Street town. Books, yeah. but people aren't shopping for clothes. No. And yeah, they've opened. Then your right. has done it every time. And she says, you know, Tucker and Ken Laura, I said, the only Elm Street Books open. No, no, there's others. Oh, BJ, you've got your hand up. Yeah, the um, we ran uh, marketing, and what was amazing were the local restaurants that did reach out. So w Waffle Cabin, who used to be over at Concessions, helped out with a food truck, and the White Buffalo, which is very nice of them. They didn't have to do that, right. and right. you know they helped with concessions. So I could see a lot of other um, local businesses being able to help out with what's happening right. and um you know that was that was special to get to see that and amazing support from town um ems yeah, police right. fire uh the yeah. incredible people of cert mm -hmm. just amazing so you're right um a lot of yeah. logistics have to get worked out <laughs> And, and to your point about the retail, to your questions, Rita, about the retail. Um, when So remember, there's three every year that are in town that are actually physically in town, and then we'll wave any one, uh, the one time that they do it. When people do linger around. So the stores typically open on Sundays around noon. The event usually finishes. Between 10 and 12, yeah. Yeah, on a Sunday, 10 and 12. Um, the, the event usually wraps up or it closes officially, stops at 11, but people start clearing out starting around 10 because they come at like six, seven in the morning and early on. So, so there is some retail to be had, shopping to be had, but it hasn't really, I mean, Design Solutions used to put a motorcycle in their window and a Porsche in there and it just never really translated into sales. So um, that doesn't mean it can't. People are there looking at cars, you know, it's- A lot know. of men. Right, and young, and young men, a lot of people taking pictures. No one's going to go try and close, you know. I guess when I was there, I saw families, I saw. Yeah, but they're not family. shopping. Yeah. Right. Are, are you, if you had your whole family there, would you go okay. in and start they shopping? Start Maybe not. They so want to eat. I actually they want they to really want to eat. Close, so that was it. But um, that was me. Um, but I, I feel like if you, if, you, if you go to one, like if you go to one store and it's closed, and you, you assume everything else is closed sometimes. So it's like if you don't have enough open, it's not going to do it. You have to have everyone, or you can't have yeah. yeah, they, they just one open. It's going to yeah. Well, good. and they just don't. It it uh, it doesn't make financial sense for them. You know, and it, it, downtown it's eight to eleven. Exactly. So when they do the my, my when they do the big saying, How is this possible? when they do the big car thing yeah. in uh, London, they put it on. The Regent Street, and so it's over there, not here, where people would shop and look at cars at the same time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it just it, it's it's been going on enough years, and you know some of them are corporate shops, and they don't have the flexibility. They are told when they can open right. and when they close, and some of them have you know some of the independents have opened, and it's just not worth their time. People aren't shopping. Some of them. Just yeah. And and you know we're not a mall. We can't make them open, mm -hmm. and you know they have to make that decision themselves. But having said that, if you were walking down the street and whether a store was closed or I had my family in tow and I didn't want to go in, if I saw something in a window that I was oh that's interesting, you know, in the back of my mind, if I didn't go back to King Kent, I want to I want to go right. into that store. So, that's true. Well, why do they only hold it on that street and not on Main Street on Sunday when there's because Main there. Street is a state road, can't um, close the state. so you can't yeah you should just. And, and also, it's a waste of time, and, and because you can take advantage of all those parking lots over there, mm -hmm. the, the, there's a number of commuter lots. It started yeah. in Doug's parking lot, yeah. and then it crept down Pine, and then it got so big that he went to the town and asked for Elm Street. So and he covers the cost of all this. I mean, he pays for all the overtime of the police. Mm -hmm. He's finally allowed sponsors for years. He didn't, and then and then now he's got some sponsors to help them offset the cost. It's huge. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. So. 
we think that the size of the last one definitely has something to do with the fact that they only had two shows this year. Normally they have four. And it is a lot of the same cars. He actually said a funny thing in the meeting. He said, most of the time, um, they know which show cars are coming, right? And there's there's cars that are a million dollars that are coming or some really old refurbished cars. But then you get, he said, every time you get a handful of people who show up in there, they think they're really cool. <laughs> Two door Mercedes, and he's like, "No, you go park over there." And they're like, "But the show cars are there." He's like, "No, you have to park yeah. over there." <laughs> but then having that conversation then ties up the whole lane of cars coming in because he's having to spend two minutes negotiating with you that you're not because there's no car. registration. So That's you wake right. up one day and you got your you think a sporty Mercedes, and you're like, "This is where and I'm going to go." Already's going to have to register cars. There's just that's but it's guys and they don't want to follow rules and they want to show <laughs> and then they want to leave when they want to leave. Yeah, you can't she and I have heart attacks. You know, it's the it's the middle of the event and six cars decide they're getting ready Driving to leave. down Elm Street and there's people. I see people. Dogs and strollers and you're like, uh, but you know, it's no, we don't we don't like rules. But it's a fabulous event. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. He gets asked to, to, to take that on the road, and he loves doing it here. And it brings so many people to town. And everybody who took pictures tied New Haney, Connecticut. I mean, not just like poof, right? Yeah, all over the Instagram. All over the world. Yeah, we made sure to do that because we thought, wait a minute, should we tag caffeine and carburetors or should we tag New Canaan? And I was like, oh, New Canaan, Connecticut. And it just was great. It just blew up. Yep. So that's what to do. All right. I think it's a wrap for tonight. As I said, the next meeting is December 2nd. You're all going to get back to me, hopefully, and tell me you want to stay on. And, you know, we're always looking for good folks as well. So if you ever um, know anybody who might be interested, and then keep the work streams going, and we'll, uh, we'll connect shortly. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Have a good, actually, I can't believe I'm saying this, but have a good Thanksgiving. Nice I know. Right. See Bye. you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.